Hi, I'm Glenn Horn, and I'm going to show you how to build a didgeridoo out of a coastal agave. The techniques that I use are different than most people, and the tools that I use are similar but different in other ways. And I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope any of the techniques that you decide to use will help you in building your didgeridoo. The outcome is a beautiful didgeridoo, and it sounds good. So. Sit back and watch the video, and I hope you pick up some techniques that will help you. I'm going to show how to make a uh, didgeridoos. We've got two types of agaves. I have the one desert agave and coastal agave. And I have a kitchen knife. What I'll do is I'll start attempting to shave off the leaves right here. What I'll do is I'll just cut these off and I'll show you what I'll do with those in just a minute. Okay. So I'm going to cut all of these leaf attachments. This is where all the leaves attach to the agave. I'll clean all this up and keep most of the natural beauty of it. There's all sorts of really nice colors and designs in these stalks. I like to leave the natural beauty of the, the agave. One of the few instruments that keep its natural beauty doesn't really change much from cutting it down to actually making the instrument. As you can see, it takes away all this stuff and leaves a really nice design on the stock. I like to leave the bell on here too. I'm gonna this one. I'm gonna leave the bell on to give it a deeper sound. And this one here, I've just kept it a straight stock, so it'll have a completely different type of sound stocks. Okay, I'm going to sand this now with a power sander and bring out some of the other aspects of the beauty of the, of the wood. Okay, now we're going to find, you want to find the center line so you can cut the agave in half. The way I do it is I make a notch here with a knife. I put a string in here with a knot on the end to hold it. And another notch halfway. There. Now there's a slight curve in the, the agave, so I've got to make adjustments for that. I've got to do this in stages. So I'll do the first part. It's going to be a slight curve to it. So, go down. Tape on it. may have to put the tape in several parts so it doesn't jump up in the air, but then you just kind of, as you can see, it's a little off. So you move it just a little like this. And then I just draw a line. Okay.
So now I've got the line drawn, as you can see. Top and the bottom came out okay. So now what I'm going to do is I use a Dremel with this nice little bit here. I don't use a machete until afterwards because the machete a lot of times will go for a while down the right spot and then it will veer off and your cut will be crooked. It doesn't always follow a precise cut. So what I do is I use this first and then I'll take the machete and cut down through the side and I'll show you that later. As you can see, that makes a really nice cut. And then later on, after I do this side and the other side, I'll take the machete and cut down because it will follow right along this crack. One of the things that's a nice thing to have is one of these workmates makes making didgeridoos really nice if you don't have a workshop. I don't have a workshop so I use this and the reason why I'm using this is because I don't have a bandsaw also. So your choice. So here we have the before. You can see all the things on the side. This is what happens with some of the stuff. You get this so you might want to have to sand it. So this is what it comes out after I've cut it and after I've sanded it at the first stage. Now you can see what the difference is. A little bit easier to work with this than this. going to do now is I'm going to start on the big part of the with a knife and I'll just start cutting this stuff out like this until I get most of the big stuff out and then I'll work down on the other parts with a power tool and I'll show you that in a little bit. It's a little different than most people use. This is kind of the way you, you go. You just start digging it out until you get it down to close to the edge of this piece here. Then I start using a grinder. I find this is, works pretty good with this knife. This is for the people that don't have a whole lot of fancy tools. Which I don't. So I make these out of just conventional stuff that I have around the house. And this helps it go a little faster, however you want to cut it. As you can see, big chunks come out. Now the next step I do is I 
measure down about 32 inches, make a mark. That'll be where the smaller part of the chamber will be and then from there on it starts to taper over and then get larger. What I use is a inch and a quarter dowel, as you can see there, an inch and a quarter. I make a halfway mark so I know exactly what half of the cylinder is. And then I use it on here with some heavy grit sandpaper. And I make the chamber as I go down. A little time consuming, but that's all right. We're not in a hurry to make this thing. And then I'll be headed down here where this mark is here, 32 inches. And then from there, I'll start expanding and make it bigger for the bell. That's what it does, see, and just work my way down. Once I get to halfway mark, then I can stop. So, here we have it. I've got it all the way to my mark, which is right about here. And it's the same all the way down. There's my halfway mark of a perfect circle. And I usually go down to that mark, just a little bit beyond it. And that'll be that for this step. The nice thing about using this is it's safe. There's no big teeth to uh, grab a hold of you. And I use different sizes of these for different parts of the didgeridoo. When it gets down further, obviously I use the smaller ones. And as you can see, it's starting to come along where you can, and you can really regulate what you're doing with the edge too. You can give yourself a nice edge here to glue with. And if you just drag it along, it just takes everything off real nice and smooth. The only thing you have to be careful of is sometimes it might crawl up the side if you get too big a teeth on whatever you're getting and it'll take a chunk out of it. But once you get used to using the tool, it's a piece of cake. So you just continue on and dig it out to here and you're pretty much set to uh, take care of the inside. But I prefer this kind of a thing over a big giant set of teeth on a saw. So. The other thing is I use is this sander on the end of this drill. What that allows is all this rough stuff after you've done cutting the inside you can uh, sand all this down real easy. And as you can see it makes the sanding real easy instead of doing it by hand. What I'm doing now is I'm using two-part epoxy, but it's polyurethane, polyester resin. Same stuff we use for making surfboards, and I coat the inside of it. Okay, I, once I've resin both sides, I put it back together with hose clamps, which is a real easy way to do it, inexpensive. And it's a real solid way to hold it together until I take it apart again. I'm going to sand the inside and then put another coat of resin on it and then glue it together and I'll use the same hose clamps. What I do is I number the hose clamps so I know exactly where they go when it comes time to putting it together and it makes it easier and quicker to put it together.